Okay, so welcome to Working in the Vacuum Store and thanks for taking my trainings. Um, I'm going to talk to you about vacuum cleaners. Um, and some of this you might already know because of course you probably have a vacuum cleaner at home. But we're going to touch on some of the basic things of a vacuum cleaner so that way you're prepared to talk vacuums with our vacuum customers. You're prepared to make recommendations and ultimately demonstrate our better quality vacuum cleaners. So this is kind of a standard unit um, that you'll see across the board with upright vacuums in the marketplace. Um, and so we're going to identify some of the basic parts. This is the handle of the vacuum. This is the power switch for the vacuum, which is on the handle. Sometimes it's on the side of the machine or sometimes it's on the bottom of the machine, like a kick switch that you step on. Um, this particular vacuum has tools, many vacuums do, uh, where there's a hose and a wand that goes down to the floor. Uh, so the air actually comes up through the wand, through the hose, and then down into the dirt chamber or the bag. Uh, depending on if it's a bag or bagless vacuum, okay? So many times uh, you can tell if a vacuum is performing by simply removing the tools of the hose, putting your hand to it, and feeling if there is suction while it's running, okay? Uh, that's one quick way to test a vacuum. Vacuum cleaners like this usually have a cord. Uh, to check the cord, you can actually swivel the latch, and then the cord comes off. Uh, so you can look and see if the cord's been ran over when you do free estimations. Um, or when you're demonstrating, you can show how easy it is to take a cord off. Um, the hose goes into the main body of the vacuum cleaner, and there's tools on board. Most vacuum cleaner tools have a standard inch and a quarter fitting. Um, that's going to be like three-fourths of vacuums in the market have inch and a quarter fitting, unless it's a specialty vacuum like a Dyson or a Milo or a Sibo, um, or like those European-made vacuums like that, like a Windsor, those German vacuums. But most vacuums like Bissell's, Eureka's, Hoover's, uh, these are car vacuums, Simplicities, um, you know, they're going to have inch and a quarter tools that fit onto the end of the hose. This is a dusting brush. It has brushes and is commonly used for cleaning um, hard surfaces or areas like a car or a screen, like a computer screen or TV screen, um, or areas where there's dirt or debris where the brushes need to go ahead and break that debris loose and then the suction pulls it in. Um, this tool actually turns into an upholstery tool. Some vacuums have an upholstery tool and a dusting brush. An upholstery tool is what's used for um, furniture, couches, cushions, stairs, things like that. Okay, And so the upholstery brush is for like aggressive cleaning on the handle or the end of the wand. Um, usually you can remove the handle from the wand, so you can use just the hose to put your dusting brush or upholstery tool on for cleaning. Okay, that's pretty common. So this is a stretch hose. It's covered in rubber and it actually extends and comes back. A lot of vacuum cleaner hoses are also wire reinforced, especially on canister style vacuums. And they don't stretch, they're just a fixed length. Okay, uh, this vacuum also has a crevice tool. A crevice tool is usually stored on the machine like the dusting brush or the upholstery tool. And it's for getting into small cracks, crevices, and areas that you can't normally get to with just the hose. You put this skinny tool on to get there. Okay, so that's the crevice tool. And just so you know, when you check in repairs in the shop, we take the dusting brush, upholstery tool, and uh, crevice tool, and we give them to the customer to take home um, so that we don't have them in with the repairs. Okay, so you're going to see that the vacuum cleaner uh, is going to have a motor inside of it. Majority of vacuum cleaners on the market have what's called a bypass suction motor system. That's where the motor actually takes the air up through the tools and into the dirt chamber. Once the debris enters the dirt chamber, it's going to enter into a bag, or if it's a bagless vacuum, there's a dirt cup that it enters into. Then uh, the debris is actually going to process through a pre motor filter or before the motor, where the air is going to go through and then come out the exhaust. Okay? So the air is actually pulling the debris into the bag, then the motor is uh, processing the air through the pre-motor filter, out the motor through the exhaust. Okay, and usually the exhaust is going to have a filter um, on the exhaust or the area where the air comes out. That's a post-motor filter. So usually you have a pre-motor filter and a post-motor filter on vacuum cleaners. Okay, that's going to be all bypass vacuum cleaner systems have some sort of filter set, a pre-motor and post-motor filter set, okay? Bagless vacuums are usually going to have pleated HEPA filter systems or something to protect the motor from the dirt just processing right through the bypass suction motor. 
Um, they're also referred to as a flow through motor, where the motor takes air in and pushes air out, okay? So that's a vacuum cleaner motor description. Um, so what this is, a bypass system taking air in through the floor, going through the hose, into the bag, and then the motor processes the air in and it comes out, all right? Um, this particular vacuum has a shut off for the brush roller so you can clean hard surface and carpet because you don't want the roller to spin on a hard surface. And that switch is down here at the bottom. Some vacuums have them on the handle. Uh, some vacuums, again, have like a kick switch on the cleaner head that say floor or carpet, um, and that engages or disengages the brush roller. Okay, so now we're gonna look at the brush roller and talk about that. Let's make sure you can see what I'm talking about. So the brush roller in a vacuum cleaner is what spins to break debris loose off of the floor and then it's going to go ahead and suck it up into the vacuum chamber, okay? The brush roller turns in the direction of the valve. So the brushes actually rotate towards the person vacuuming, all right? Higher quality brushes are made out of nylon, soft nylon, horsehair, uh, and those materials. Lower quality brush rollers are made out of plastic. Plastic brushes are really bad for carpet because they're going to tear it up and they're going to cause problems and actually void warranties on new carpets. So make sure you tell customers that if they have plastic brushes. There's a bottom plate that actually covers this area. In this particular vacuum, this Recar actually has a quick release where you can flip a switch and the whole bottom plate will actually come off of the vacuum um, without really having to take tools to it. So this is a big advantage right here. Um, and we could also see the belt. Uh, we could change the belt if we needed to change the belt. Um, this is a stretch belt system. That means that the belt is rubber and it stretches to go into place. Some belts are cog belts or geared belts or serpentine, which means they have long grooves in them that fit into the pulley systems. And those are a little bit higher quality belt systems, all right? It's very common if you wanna check a belt to just turn that brush roller if the belt's broken uh, the roller will just spin freely. Okay, if we actually flip the switch on this vacuum and disengage the clutch or the roller, you can see it spins with no resistance, and that's because it disengaged the roller for hard surface cleaning. And we can also see the suction valve is over on this side of the vacuum cleaner, which is very common. So you got your brush roller. So it's also called an agitator um, or a beater bar. Uh, people call it all these different things, and so do all the companies. They've all got different names. Beater bar, agitator, brush roller. Then you've got your brushes. This is a metal brush with removable strips. Most brush rollers on the market are a single piece that have the brushes on them. Uh, so many times when these brushes wear down, when they're too low to clear the plate to clean the carpet, or they're worn in a direction at an angle uh, and need to be replaced, the whole roller needs to be replaced. Uh, this is a higher quality roller uh, that has replaceable brush strips, which is an advantage. And then we have the wheels of the vacuum. Okay, so we've got wheels on the bottom plate and wheels on the back over here. This particular unit, um, this Recar, is what's called a floating head. Um, it just has an automatic uh, setting, so the wheels are at a fixed setting all the time. Okay, they don't uh, move up or down. Uh, which is okay for mid-pile to low-pile carpet. Um, once we go into very like thick carpets and plush carpets, uh, we want to recommend vacuums that have height adjustment. And by the way, if you ask a customer what kind of carpet do they have in their home and they tell you they have really deep plush carpet and they don't have height adjustment, uh, or they're bringing a repair that does not have height adjustment, like a Dyson or vacuums without height adjustment, you need to let them know there's probably, that's probably the reason why you're having problems with the roller not working or the cleaner head not working is you have way too deep a carpet pile for the unit and it doesn't have height adjustment, okay? On the back of the machine, we have a foot pedal. So I'm gonna show you that here. The foot pedal on the back of the machine is stepped on to take the machine out of the upright position into the cleaning position, okay? A lot of vacuums like this one, actually the cleaner head will stay in a locked position at a certain point to go up onto rugs. Uh, what the customer does is they actually pick it up and depress it one more time, and then it goes down all of the way for cleaning low or below um, bed, 
beds or furniture and things like that. And then it locks into the upright position. Foot pedals can break commonly, so if you are checking your repair and you want to check that, uh, make sure as well. Okay? Uh, this vacuum has a thermal reset on the bottom. So when the motor gets uh, restricted, like if the bag's too full or there's a clog in the system, um, it's going to go ahead and shut itself down um, when that happens. And it's actually this little switch, this thermal reset switch, pops out when it gets really hot from the motor getting really hot from overworking. And then you have to change the bag or remove the clog. You take an ink pen and depress that little button and the machine will turn on again. Okay. Other types of machines will have um, time-based thermal resets, uh, which means basically when the motor overheats, that thermal reset pops, and until the heat goes down, then that thermal reset stays popped. But once it cools down, it'll open back up, and then the machine will run again. Uh, so some machines you know, don't have that button, but you just have to wait for them to cool down and turn it back on. Inferior vacuums have no thermal reset, so when they're clogged or they, you know, the filters aren't changed like on a lot of cheap bagless vacuums, the motor simply burns out or blows up and you have to buy a new vacuum cleaner, all right? So that's the basic language around vacuums, brush rollers, belts, pre-motor, post-motor filter, bag system. Uh, this is a HEPA style bag right here. Um, people use paper bags as well. HEPA style bags are better than paper bags because they actually breathe more, more air can flow through this and actually compact more debris inside of this because it'll expand more um, and more air can flow through it. So it packs more in inside of the vacuum chamber here inside. A paper bag is porous, so as dirt fills up the pores and it becomes restricted, uh, it only fills up so far and then it's full and it can't really breathe anymore and it can't fill up more. So a HEPA bag is a lot better. HEPA stands for High Efficiency Particulate Absorption. That's what HEPA stands for. So this is a HEPA spun material and it's biodegradable, okay? HEPA uh, means that um, when it, something is HEPA certified, that means that it will filter 99.97% of particulates down to 0.03 micrometers or microns, okay? So really small fine particulates can be absorbed by this. This is great for people with allergies or asthma or people that generally care about their health and want to breathe clean air and not polluted air. Vacuum cleaners actually will put out dust, they'll put out dirt, um, and they'll put out carbon emissions from the motor just by exhausting them when you vacuum. So vacuuming over the period of your life can actually lower your life expectancy without good filtration. So HEPA actually fills up bigger uh, bags, it holds more, and it's healthier for you. So in the long run, it can actually cost you less and it's better for you. Okay, so when people are buying bags, if you have a HEPA recommendation or a HEPA option, because sometimes we have the paper and HEPA bags, always recommend the HEPA bags for those reasons, okay? Uh, same thing with filters. If people want, you know, uh, to check a repair and always recommend changing their filters uh, because it's going to improve the filtration of the vacuum, the airflow of the motor, so the motor is more efficient and it picks up better, and it's healthier for them, okay? So better filtration is better for the motor system to keep the dirt out of the motor to give it a longer life, and it's healthier for you when you breathe the air, all right? So there's a lot of benefits to good filtration, actually, in the vacuum cleaner all the way around. And uh, sometimes HEPA, you know, costs a little bit more as far as filters and bags, but ultimately in the long run, it's more affordable than buying lots of paper bags um, and having, you know, health problems or whatever, especially for people that are asthmatic or have allergies. This vacuum also has a headlight on the front so that you can see uh, in areas like uh, furniture where there's shadows and you'll see the dirt to pick it up. If somebody's headlamp isn't working on uh, a vacuum, we can replace it with an LED headlamp uh, in most cases. And those are $20 light bulbs that are LED that never burn out. They never get hot. They put out a brighter white light. They're usually about three times brighter and we guarantee them for life. Um, so always recommend LED bulbs to replace in vacuums that come in uh, for repair. Um, we can also upgrade units we sell to LED lights for the $20, um, you know, if they want that better light in their vacuum cleaner, okay? So uh, with all that being said, 
remember uh, the basic things about the vacuum cleaner um, and then we're going to go through a basic vacuum cleaner demonstration as well because what you'll find is as you talk about these things with customers and we have better quality vacuums actually at very affordable prices and we take trade-ins um, you can actually sell vacuums on a daily basis in our entry midline levels and even top of the line levels um, if you just talk about people's vacuums with them and then make comparisons to what we have that's better, you're going to end up actually turning the vacuum on and demonstrating it. And remember, a vacuum cleaner demo always involves turning the vacuum on to show it and allowing the customer to try it out, just like a sewing machine. We're turning it on and showing it and selling it, and then we're letting them try it after that uh, so they can try before they buy. That's why the, these products are on our showroom. All right? Thanks.